You have to have two letters in your hands at all times, okay? When I say what the word is, you have to try to spell the word. You can't swap your letters with another member of the team. you just got to put your hands in the right place. Okay, first word up. Restaurant. Boys and their achievement in literacy is a major concern for all schools. In Wales, as with the rest of the UK, boys fall behind girls in early literacy skills, and this gap in attainment widens with age. To tackle this problem in Wales, there is a new campaign to improve boys' literacy. A Pant Comprehensive School in Ponteclea in South Wales has been recognised as demonstrating excellent practice in their strategies to improve boys' literacy. We use the quick spelling uh, for two reasons really. One, just to get immediacy in terms of the lesson, making sure that the boys are immediately engaged. Uh, they had been having a spelling test over the last five weeks with the words that we used and it was just a more interactive, more challenging way of doing that. <laughs> By and large, boys prefer more kinesthetic activities where they're up and about actually doing rather than simply watching or uh, viewing as a means of learning. So they enjoy actually being engaged in things. They like short, sharp activities, hence the spelling, multi-sensory uh, exercise, rather than simply writing it on a whiteboard and showing it. It, it suddenly becomes much more engaging for them and a, a learning style that they prefer. The strategies used in this English department are applicable in Welsh medium, bilingual and primary schools. OK, the final round, the winners, is going to be sorted out by a slight change to the rules. You are not allowed to talk this time. You have to organise the letters correctly without using words. You need to face the other way as well. Eliza. I think when we focus on um, boys' strengths and try to use boys' strategies and boys' resources, what sometimes the effect can be to actually uh, build up the girls' skills because they're their activities and uh, learning strategies that they don't naturally use, that they don't feel comfortable with, but because they're having to do them, they actually learn them very well, well indeed as well, so it becomes useful for the girls too. More boys are achieving well in schools than ever before, uh, but the problem is, of course, is that uh, the gap between what they're achieving and what girls are achieving, especially in literacy, uh, is not narrowing and uh, in some instances and in some years is increasing. Uh, and there is certainly uh, a sizable minority of boys who do not develop uh, to their potential in literacy. Now, what we're going to do in the first 10 minutes, our quick starter activity, to improve your understanding of themes and symbols of our play, A View From The Bridge, which you will need, I am going to give you a series of props. We have single gender classes at Key Stage 4 GCSE, and I think what we found is that um, by separating the classes, we can, we can match the tasks and the material and resources that we use to the boys. We've deliberately uh, used teachers whose style of delivery, I suppose, is more boy-friendly. And I just think responses from the pupils will tell you that in the majority of pupils, the boys find it an environment where they're prepared to take risks. Well, because it's an all-boys class, you can be more comfortable with each other and like express stuff a lot easier than when you're like, in a mixed class. Well, the good thing about English lessons is it's a lot easier to do presentations in front of all the boys. So we'll just see the teacher. And more comfortable having a laugh. Yeah, it's <laughs> You can have a lot more male humour. <laughs> make jokes you wouldn't be able to make with a female class, so... And we got a teacher that's all right. Pops on to her, pass them round. Are you getting the hang of this now? Pass them round, auntie. Oh, oh, oh. The lesson um, starter activities, I think, are really important to hook the interest and engagement of the pupils you're teaching. And something that is as tangible as props onto it, and it, again, it's a gimmick, anything that you've got as a sort of visible or tangible tool to help anchor... Uh, your learning objectives and aims. And what I tried to do with that was give them something that symbolised a theme in, in the play. Right, stop! Stop! Boys, up this way. If I agree, this point gets the team gets the point. Please out. I can sing paper doll. You like paper doll. Right, excellent. Point goes to three pints and a half, and you cannot use that quote again. Particularly when you've got a class consisting entirely of boys. 
the motivation or to keep them motivated and enthused and uh, give them a purpose for their learning, organising them into teams or groups gives them that purpose, gives them that motivation. Everything that they do then contributes to that team. So if they get uh, an A star for coursework, because this is a GCSE class, it relates to five uh, points for their team. Um, we have to gain groups and every task we have points and whoever's at the top of the leaderboard like wins. It's good because then it makes you competitive. Like you want to win. If you can like trade in your points for like another Yeah, you can buy, buy enough people, buy the people and everything. Yeah, sometimes it's a bit off task. That's just, and then we lose points. <laughs> Absolutely, boys learn through talk, through interaction. Um, just knowing that there's somebody else that they can ask if it's not the teacher. And to me, I really would question the effectiveness of the learning that takes place in an absolutely silent classroom. Quite honestly, the, most, the best lessons that I've had and in my own experience have been those noisy, busy, industrious hum where pupils are learning through talking, talking through learning, communicating with one another, moving around if they need to. You need to set five questions <coughs> on your theme that you must teach the answers to in your, in your presentation. I think the phrase that I've come across is keeping it real. Boys, and particularly with literacy, which can be and has been historically quite an abstract thing, where they need, boys need to realise the importance and the validity of what they're doing. You have to give it a reason. You have to make it real in their world. You're going to listen to the song, and then you're going to have three minutes after the song, working in silence, just writing it down as quickly as you can, a list of really descriptive words, really powerful words, OK? So as soon as the music starts playing, you might want us to start writing down those, those, those words. All right, here we go. There's some great words there. Try and build on those words, OK? Think about the words like lyrics, sound, the, re the what, did, what instruments did you hear? Can you describe those instruments, perhaps? The guitar, the drums. And using that music, it's a nice way to start a lesson. Immediately, it raises the tempo of the lesson rather than trying to. I want to keep the lessons quick paced, fast, and I think music is a good way to start by doing that. Goose bumping words. <laughs> I wanted to appeal to those who are solid music le uh, learners, basically, sound learners. Um, so I chose an upbeat song that they could all enjoy and get into something fresh and young for them as well. Dan, aim, upbeat, fire. Uh -uh. We're gonna get in that order. Right. Nia, aim, unique, fire. Ooh. Upbeat and unique. Isaac, okay. upbeat or unique, which do you prefer? Upbeat. Um, upbeat. I need to try and get boys involved in expanding the vocabulary, basically, uh, being more descriptive. Um, so I thought about the best way to do this, and the game was clearly the best option, especially for boys. They love that competitive element. Um, and bringing this, this kind of sense of violence into it without there being any you know, real violence, I suppose. Boys were really, really um, enthralled with that idea. Aaron, aim, enticing, fire. Dan. Aim. Immense. 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 Oh, that's a good word. I think it's very important as a male teacher to be seen um, it, using all facets of English, you know, uh, the way I speak, uh, that, that I can enjoy words and enjoy using words uh, constructively and effectively. Uh, pupils also would like, to, you know, the, the, the boys especially see that as a positive role model. The boys will come and tell me what books they read and I'll go away and read those books as well. If the, the narrative, the story has, uh, is well written, both boys and girls will appreciate it. I like like action action books and um, different magazines. Uh, I like Anthony Howard's books, Hobbits. Uh, yes, yeah, so like Stormbreaker. I'm reading Russell Brand at the moment, and it's really funny. I like reading like adventure books. Mainly like horror or um, like sort of um, real life ones. Uh, like Harry Potter books sometimes, um, but I never really finished them to be honest. But I think boys like horror. Mm -hmm. Um, action. Yeah, action books oh. and scary ones, probably. Read, oh. read horror or maybe like comedy, stuff like that. I think books about football, sports, stuff like that. Girls are more like fantasy yeah. and stuff <laughs> and happy and stuff like that. Boys like the action books and girls like teenager girly books. Yeah. Um, like 
when it's about like girls and love and stuff. Girls like more emotional type of books and boys like more action books and sports books. Yeah, we don't like that type of stuff. We don't like emotional like books. Um, what we're going to do now, I'm going to assign bank managers and plan officers to each of you. You're going, those of you who are left are going to have to do your explaining to the people who are coming to visit you. You've got to make sure your restaurant sounds superb. Okay, Sam and Kieran, with the girls here, please. <laughs> Where are the kitchen slash toilets located? At the back. At the right back. Don't you think it would be easier to have the kitchen in a place where you can get to everywhere yeah, easily? Yeah, but there'd be a waste dress in every room and it'd be like a bed. I think role play is a real opportunity, particularly sort of in the early years of secondary school when they don't think that it's too ridiculous to, to, to be doing role play exercises. I think it's a real opportunity for them to sort of engage and also imagine what it would be like if they had certain careers. I mean, the, the two two activities that I gave them today, that of bank management and, and planning officer, you know, they can, they're the sort of roles that some of those boys will see themselves in in future, and therefore, you know, they, it's easier for them to engage in the idea of them being that particular person. I don't think it's very hygienic having the toilets right next Where there are activities such as role play, where there's an element of competitiveness in the learning, uh, where there is uh, a great deal of variety in the lesson is broken up into small bite pieces with quick feedback, moving on to the next step where there are clear targets, where there's a very firm sense of purpose and direction. Those sorts of learning tend to engage far more boys than learning which is based on a large amount of, of teacher talk and follow-up confirmatory writing tasks. You need to make sure that you've included these things. Okay, if they're not on your list, make sure they are by the time I finish talking. The use of technology in the English in this school has, has, has just gone overboard in the last few years. Uh, every room now has a, a projector. A few of the rooms have interactive whiteboards and, and virtually all our lessons are delivered through PowerPoints and through the oh, use of some technology or other. And I think it, it immediately engages the boys. It's, a, it's an element of, of, of skill and learning that they're familiar with and they enjoy. And as much as we can, we allow them to try to engage with that as well. I think it's a real advantage in terms terms of addressing boys' literacy, the opportunity to use ICT in English. We basically overhauled our schemes of work. We put in far more boy-friendly, brought in more boy-friendly texts. We updated our schemes of work to incorporate lots more ICT activities. Um, we have included far more reference to media and non-fiction. And ultimately, then, we introduced the single gender classes at Key Stage 4. So there's been a whole host of activities or strategies that we've tried to implement uh, to motivate boys. The whole stream is it to have a motorcycle. That's lovely because it's a closed question. We only want this to show understanding or memory of facts more than anything. And the relationship you have with pupils, but boys particularly, should never be underestimated. There are things that pupils will do for a teacher that they believe is on their side and that they have a good relationship with that they wouldn't do for others. And that's very, I, I, it's probably honest of me, but I think that that is absolutely true. It's all about personalities and relationships and praise of what they do well, I, sh don't, I don't think should ever be underestimated.